Hi and welcome to uh, new and old students. Uh, this series of videos is going to focus on of mice and men and in particular it's going to focus on each of the main characters and now arguably there are seven or eight main characters and whilst doing these characters of course is I'm going to integrate um, discussion on the main themes. Now the exam itself on the literature paper is broken into two parts is the first part you'll see is a context question is where they'll take a page uh, and, and that page will focus on uh, one character in particular and of course the frequent question is how is that character presented in terms of the way they speak and the way they behave now going to the second part which is worth uh, 20 marks uh, and that, by the way, is double the first one, so it's 30 marks altogether. Now, um, you are supposed to spend 20 minutes on that first part and then 40 minutes on the broader essay question. Now, you get two, two questions and you just choose one, all right? And, and they will then focus on perhaps, a, 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 you know, well, one of the major themes anyway. Um, and also one or many of the of the characters. Now, um, what you're going to see uh, next on the next slide is taken from around page three. It's the description of Lenny and George. Uh, the book opens, of course, uh, with quite a detailed description of uh, the natural scene is where they, these two characters, George and Lenny, are going to arrive before they go to the ranch. And of course, they're going to return to that scene at the end of the novel. Now, is, I think if you look at it, the next slide very closely, you can do two things before uh, we discuss it again. Uh, firstly, get a pen and paper, and then what I'd like you to do focus on Lenny and by all means um, look at George too is write down important information about Lenny in a list. Now try to keep it to one word or two words um, and it means that we can go uh, much faster and then all right what I'd like you to do it sounds daft but is do a drawing of Lenny and try to annotate it as fully as you can. And then in a moment you can see my pathetic drawing of Lenny and we will springboard from that by looking at the descriptions of Lenny and analysing them much more closely. So I'll be taking though that description and really drilling down is to show you a model if you like is so that we can make the point we've got plenty of quotes in that extract and we can analyze it in a great deal of detail to achieve the very highest grades so let's begin have a look pause it's going to take you about 10 minutes so i'll see you later Well, hope you've had a good look. Uh, you can see that th there's quite um, a lot of detail about the way he looks and what he's dressed in. Uh, you can gather then that they're both dressed in denim. I mean, what does that tell us? Well, uh, denim is an old material in, in America used by a very durable, as we know it, a very durable um, type of clothing uh, and used by ranch workers. Also on their backs, we've got this uh, bindle, an Americanism, but it means a kind of blanket where you've got all their belongings. Now you can see is that uh, they haven't got many belongings if you can fit it all in a blanket. They are, of course, mig migrant workers looking for work. And George has, both, uh, has got both of them a work permit to work in a ranch in California, very hot state um, and hence that we've got these wide brimmed hats as well now uh, physically 
is we can look at the face of, of Lenny and it's interesting especially when we consider George too. Um, he, Lenny has got a round face whereas jo George has got sharper features and, and, and a more defined bone structure and a bony nose. So, uh, another key difference between the two of them, of course, is the eyes. Um, Lenny has got these pale, large eyes. Now, you might ask, why is that significant? Well, he is in many ways childlike, um, suggested by the eyes and the uh, roundness, too. Um, it describes his face also as shapeless uh, another interesting adjective adjective because it almost it's almost acts like a, a metaphor because Lenny is shapeless in the sense of his whole life he needs shape and that shape is given to him by George who protects him is his guardian, gets his work permits, keeps him out of trouble, uh, provides him with a dream, uh, makes him happy by giving him uh, things such as the mice and the puppy to pet, to keep him contented. Now, he is childlike in, in many other ways. Um, he is dependent on uh, George, whom he sees as like a big brother or a father. Now, this is made clear, actually, in, in another quote. Because, uh, Steinbeck says, they walk in single file, even in open spaces. Which, if you think about it, is really weird. Is most of the time close friends, as these two are, would walk side by side and have a conversation. But it doesn't seem like that, and you ask yourself why. Well, quite clearly, again, it's a kind of metaphor because George has to lead and always has to lead because he doesn't, Lenny doesn't know where he's going, and clearly he can't read a map. Um, he he would not arrive at the destination, which tells you again about um, his intelligence level, which is quite low. And we can see later, of course, we can ask, well, how low? How low is it? Now, um, other details that are important. He is described as a big, in fact, the adjective is used, huge, a huge man. I often ask my students, come on, let's drill down. What, what, what does that mean? Well, a huge man, if he came through the, the door, I guess everybody would look and they would make the comment, that is a big man. But what do we mean? Um, I guess it, it means height, broad. It does say, of course, that Lenny has got broad shoulders. All right, broad, sloping shoulders. Um, we would imagine then he's tall, tall, heavy and broad and quite impressive, I guess, to, to look at. Uh, oh, what does that matter in these early stages? Well, there's a comic moment, I think, as well, is because in this single file when they're walking along, George actually stops and Lenny then walks into the back of him. Uh, what, what does that mean? I think it's quite comical, but it means, of course, it is one of two things, is that uh, I guess um, Lenny is not looking. Uh, yeah, George is, 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 stops quickly uh, and Lenny cannot react quickly. He is not fast, whereas George is described as quick, quick-witted, quick, it seems. Lenny is much slower in all ways, physically, mentally. Of course, he may not be concentrating and looking down. Um, and therefore, he walks into the back of George, which must be irritating. Now, uh, we're also told about 
you know, quite a lot then about the way he behaves. Well, uh, the way he talks, well, not yet anyway. We've got a little, a little wait for that, but a uh, great deal there about behaviour. Yeah, I mean, you can look closely, for example, about the, the way he walks and um, you, you would imagine that he's a plodder, he's slow, uh, but a big stride. But those arms are hanging loosely and not, not moving naturally. And um, I often uh, reenact this in my class with my arms down at my side and walking along, plodding along. So what does it look like? And then often you'd have someone saying, well, it looks quite Neanderthal. And I ask the question, do you think he's doing that on purpose? And then maybe so, is to show a human in perhaps in basic form uh, with low intelligence or simply that he is ungainly, he is unathletic, he is awkward, particularly in comparison with George. He may be uh, smaller, much smaller, but he's quick, athletic, lithe. So we've always got that uh, contrast. Now, as we move closer into the language, we've got some interesting things here is, we've got these similes. Now, animals play great part in of mice and men as in the title, of course, um, but we have these similes that are very interesting. He walks like a bear, and he drinks like a horse. Now, I just want to pause and digress a little bit on the, on the bear. And uh, forgive me for this little anecdote. But uh, many years ago, as a student in university, is, uh, I used to go to America and teach in the summer. And we used to have these induction courses before going to, to America to teach on what these summer camps. Great experience, by the way. But... We used to get warned about bears. Now, you might ask, well, why? Uh, well, at these picnic parks, and uh, there used to be some dull people that used to uh, leave them food, even throw them uh, food when they used to come out of the, 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 the forests. Of course, in appearance, they are large, they are heavy, um, they are quite ungainly like Lenny. Now, is looking at the face, again, you might get the impression is that they're not so ruthless, brutal. Um, we, we love the idea of still giving children bears and, uh, as babies and we keep them. They have been personified, of course, with Disney. But never make the mistake is that they are brutal um, in their own environment. I mean, we were told in the induction is once the food ran out, you would, they would be running to the car and they'd rip the car door off to get more food or you. Uh, the same goes, I think, for polar bears too, that uh, when they're hungry, they will eat a human being. Anyway, what does this matter? Well, it tells us a lot about Lenny and the way he behaves in terms of how he walks, his stature. But interestingly, I think, is people, um, is people making the mistake that he is more friendly than he is, that also that he, uh, he is unpredictable. And he can be dangerous. And of course, he is extremely strong. Now, I think that's enough uh, for you to write a few more words down on your list describing Lenny. So I'll see you again in a minute when you've had a look at my wonderful drawing. Lenny is, of course, very childlike and often 
this can get him into trouble. Um, because if we think of, well, how young is that child? Well, even in uh, chapter one, I often think when he puts his finger in the water and creates those ripples, he says to George, in, in again, in a very simple childlike language, look, George, look what I've done. Of course, one can think, uh, what age do you have to be is to enjoy that um, reaction to your fingers being put in a uh, in in the water and then do it repeatedly and, and enjoy it uh, perhaps we can think of an uh, of an age it's certainly perhaps even young primary so we know is that he is dependent he's dependent on George for all sorts of things he's dependent on him as a big brother or a father and that really George provides uh, a home for him a roof over his head a job food um, and ensures his survival uh, we can also think about this, uh, that he is childlike, but must be remembered that he is in a, in a big man's body and that's going to po uh, pose problems too. Especially in that childlike way of he likes touching and petting soft things. We know that he is given uh, a number of animals, mice and eventually the pup. Um, and he breaks the neck of those. He doesn't mean it, but he's just petting them and they die. Of course, he gets in trouble very early on in the, in the novel is when they go into a town called Weed and he touches a girl's, a young girl's dress. Now, look at it from the point of view of the townspeople who would have seen him as a sexual deviant they are run out of town and there's a posse chasing them uh, on criminal charges. Of course, um, all these events, they kind of foreshadow at the end, of course, the killing of Curly's wife, which begins uh, with Curly's wife again is making friends with Lenny and thinking him more passive than he is. She encourages him to stroke her hair. And of course, he begins to panic when she says stop and don't. And he, he panics more because he feels she's going to shout. And therefore, that will lead to what he perceives is the end of, of his dream with George and his friendship with George so he then uh, holds on of course he kills her um, the extract I've got next is for you to have a look at as well is very interesting because there's another person who mistakes uh, how um, dangerous he can be um, and that is Crooks in chapter 4 of course, it's a nice piece of text as well, is that um, Lenny cannot understand why uh, Crooks is not in the dormitory, that he's in this shed on his own uh, next door to the animals. Uh, he cannot understand, even well, when Crooks tells him, it's because I'm black. Um, it is, of course, uh, I think is reflecting racism uh, a racism that is systemic in uh, america because uh, we have learned that hatred and it is not natural which is uh, shown by lenny and young children now um we are uh, coming to a point again is where you can add now uh, further information about uh, Lenny and take a closer look at his childlike 
language as well the simple words the simple broken words that he uses and also in many ways uh, even though it's um, more elaborate in terms of looking at George and his dream known as the American dream still Lenny's is a very simplified dream where he has to this sense of freedom but he just wants to look after the rabbits and feed them alfalfa to get further depth just have a look at the scenes i've suggested to look at and just like uh, in the early part of this video take a text part of the text and analyze it in detail and in particular then is look closely at the way he speaks now just a note on that to help you sometimes it's uh, what he doesn't say because as you've guessed he is limited he has a poor memory uh, he has a very limited vocabulary and what you often find is that he is speaking in simple short sentences with basic monosyllabic words he will use American slang words but even those is he's often repeating what George has said to hopefully memorize them if you can remember when uh, I mean, he is told to shut up, but um, he repeats the words of George is when he's talking to the boss and the boss senses straight away that there's something wrong here with, with Lenny. Uh, and when he interjects after George has already said it, you know, he's a good worker, strong as a bull, is uh, Lenny too uh, pipes in as strong as a bull. Uh, and then stops again um, so it's these phrases short sentences uh, babyish uh, words repetition uh, that mark his speech hopefully that that helps You'll soon find out looking at those major themes is that uh, you can write a, a, some notes about how Lenny is connected to them. Uh, major themes like the American dream, disability, uh, friendship, isolation, racism. But also if you follow this series of videos and next in, an, in a couple of days I'll do one on George. Is you'll be adding to those notes so that you will have a more in-depth uh, knowledge of those themes now just let me tell you is apart from uh, of mice and men i've also got videos on romeo and juliet and macbeth you might like to see for the shakespeare coursework also coming soon i will do a couple of videos on poetry appreciation uh, looking ahead to the poetry comparison also that there are a number of language videos also you may like to view and um, it takes you through the units uh, units one two and three of the english language gcse paper so if you've liked this video please uh, give us a thumbs up or make comment see you again